I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm happy to inter t today to introduce Lindsay Anderson to everyone. She's come from Boise to share her story, and it's an interesting story, I think, in the sense that a lot of people will, f will relate to, to your journey. Right. And I, I, so I appreciate you coming and Thanks sharing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and you started your life in Idaho, is that right? Born and raised. <laughs> okay. I'm an Idaho spud. <laughs> an Idaho spud. Yes. Huh? Okay. And you were, were you born in the church? I wasn't born in the church. My mother converted from Catholicism when I oh. was almost four. Oh. And I remember vaguely her baptism. Yeah. And she was, I think, typical of a convert yeah. when she was gung-ho oh, after really? that. Yeah, she was all in. Yeah, and, and, so, and still is, uh, is Very she? much so, is she? yes. Okay. So from that point on, from four years old on, I was raised in the LDS church and I lived every yeah. moment of it. Did you? Yes. Baptized at eight, I baptized guess. Baptized at eight and mutual and seminary and all oh. of my callings and yeah. everything that was expected. Yeah, and you, of course, there's a lot of LDS in Idaho, of course. It, right. Did it seem like a... <laughs> an LDS culture that you were... Yeah, I would guess that in, in my hometown there's roughly 80% LDS. LDS. So, yeah. yes, all of my friends, all of my yeah. classmates, were all my neighbors yeah. were LDS. So there wasn't a shortage of an LDS person to uh, provide a casserole to you and you needed <laughs> things like that. I guess to ask, as we often do, your testimony of the church was it uh, during these formative years you mm -hmm. went to seminary you said did yep. you and i think you even read the book of mormon a couple of times several right? times yeah. yeah i have i had a testimony that i repeated multiple times every fast and sunday fast and, and, testimony yeah, meeting. Yeah. and even in seminary when we had our fast and testimony meetings yeah. it was generally the same thing every single time and yeah. a lot of people they tell me that that's not the case when i confront them on this but Honestly, in my experience, all of them are the same. I could give you the top five that everyone says, I know this church is true. I know Joseph Smith was a prophet. I know, I know that... President uh, Monson. President, oh, it's President Monson now. It was Hinckley and, yeah. and so on. And I believe in the prophets and I want a temple marriage the and I love my right. family. And, uh, oh yeah, Jesus, <laughs> at the very end, maybe. Maybe. And that's yeah. kind of what happened at every fast and testimony meeting. Well, see, I think it's even interesting that, and we just use the terminology, but you, you said that your mother converted to the church. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, I'd gone on a mission and I realized a few years after coming home from my mission that I was always about converting people to the church. Right. You know, it to was, I never even thought about Jesus mm -mm. in that whole process. But. Well, I'm sure you had a quota and you kept track of how many people oh, that yeah. you converted into the Mormonism. The doors we knocked on. Right. And yeah. there were always some tallies yeah. and not really how many souls you were bringing to Christ. Yeah. And that's the ultimate Well, so goal. did you, um, um, as you say, bear, bore your testimony and all that? It mm -hmm. just lived the religion? I mean, it was, just, it was just your life, right? It was. It was absolutely my life. And I was generally happy and didn't question. I, 
I did live with some guilt, though. You know, your parents mm -hmm. will hold it over your head about <laughs> living the laws and ordinances Keeping of the gospel, the keeping yeah. the commandments, going yeah. to BYU, finding a temple-worthy husband, a return missionary. And I'm not kidding. My mother had a young man picked out for me mm -hmm. who she wanted me to marry, a return missionary. My parents tried to pull some strings and got me into BYU before I even graduated, and I didn't want to go there. <laughs> it was almost like they were directing my future into this little path that you they wanted to go. comfortable with that. Huh? No, I played piano and I played in seminary during... You played for uh, primary too, Yes, right? I was Did the you? primary pianist yeah. for a couple years. That was my favorite calling. Yeah. I love the piano and those little kids are so fun and cute. And uh, But now I look back and I think about all of the the songs that we sing. <laughs> They're so fun, but you don't realize that music and activity like that has a bit of indoctrination to it. Yeah, and it certainly it, does. It really changed the the memories you for start me. thinking the words and what you were yeah. actually singing yeah the, our, our introduction here of uh, praise to the man is right and there's so many i want to be a missionary now i yeah. love to see the temple all those cute little primary songs that i loved yeah. playing they have kind of a negative connotation now yeah now you went to efy especially times. for youth was yep. that where was that at was All of them local? were in Utah. Were they down mm -hmm. here at, yep. at BYU or All Snow? Or? We did. Oh, I take that back. I think I went to one in BYU, Idaho, but back then it was called Ricks. Right. Okay. And I did one in BYU and I think one in Provo, or I mean Ogden. Yeah. Is, did they hold them in Ogden? Like I, I don't can remember. Hold them everywhere. Two anywhere. or three. Yeah. And okay. we would truck down on buses or in minivans with the yeah. the parents and all of our <laughs> deacons and teachers yeah. and all the other boys. Patriarchal blessing. You got a patriarchal yes. blessing. When you were... I actually got a patriarchal blessing after I got married, and so I waited a long time oh, to you? do that, and finally decided I was committed and I was righteous enough to get my patriarchal blessing because you had to be worthy. Yeah. And I wanted that, and I it was so spiritual, and my mom came and my husband came, and I look back and I read it now, and it was wrong. So <laughs> the things that the Patriarch said was going, were going to happen. Some of them didn't. Uh -huh. They're kind of generic. I've actually had a couple other people read theirs so, to yeah, me. And oh yeah, mine was the same way. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think there's a little bit of that that, that goes on. Yeah. Well, you actually uh, get married young. Very Someone young. that you'd known ever since you were six. You were yep. telling me that uh, mm -hmm. and you marry him and he's not LDS. No, so that was, was a really Was that hard for deal. the family? And, Mom. That caused a lot of relationship problems yeah. with my mom and I, and her and I were really close. Uh -huh. I was her oldest, and she had so many expectations for me, and I did. Yeah. I, I lived that perfect LDS life. I went to Mutual, I played the piano, I got straight A's, I had good friends, and I didn't do bad things, yeah. you know, like all those party kids. <laughs> and, yeah. and then all of a sudden, here comes my husband, and things start falling apart, and she blames him, and he's several years older when I'm only 16 and 17 starting to date oh. him and she lost her mind she this is not what's supposed to happen I have your husband <laughs> picked out for you and and he basically uh, broke the whole mold and I fell in love with him and I had to convince him that I was the one for him <laughs> poor guy and now he he happens to be a Christian and so your efforts in the next few years were to get him converted right I tried hard I invited him to, get to the church missionaries over or? several did times. You? And Half invited him times. to church and mm -hmm. stuff? After we got married, he was less inclined to come to church with me. But while we were dating, he came a yeah, little well, bit more of, right? <laughs> That's how that works. But um, I kept pushing it. I kept inviting missionaries over. He's like, sure, come on, bring them over. We'll yeah. feed them. And, and he was always welcoming. Yeah, let's yeah. feed these missionaries. And we had some from out of the country with fun little accents. And he really enjoyed them. And I'm like, okay, are you ready to get baptized now? No, I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. And I kept telling him, well, we believe in the Bible, too. Yeah. And it, it took some finagling. And he was so patient. He knew how firm of a belief that he had in the Lord. And no matter how much or how hard I pushed, he was not swayed. And now, he was, knew you wanted to go to the temple, though, probably. And be married for time and all he eternity. And, and I was disappointed and angry and stomped my foot and, and was uh, very open about my frustration. Yeah. But Did you ever... I don't know, did you feel guilty, but did you ever feel like, oh gosh. I'm, I did. You know, I thought, 
when I married him, I really thought I could convert him, and, and this isn't working out Change as planned. <laughs> and I felt a little guilty because I had left the belief system and in hopes that he would come along back over to my belief system, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, how long does this got to take? And <laughs> I was really frustrated, but I, I still believed in the religion, but I kind of started to waver in my activity. Yeah. And after about five or so years of marriage, I became inactive and only went sporadically. Well, you kind of moved away, you said, and yeah. to a place where there really were too many churches. And... Right. About five years after we got married, we moved to Hollywood for a temporary, just for a year. And it was kind of shocking. The culture shock was really surprising when I, there aren't any Mormon churches on around every on every <laughs> single corner. And I don't have any LDS friends or neighbors. And it was yeah. very not to say wicked, but it was very secular. Mm. A lot of it scared me. Yeah. I saw crime and things that I'd never saw in my sleepy little town yeah, of Burley. Yeah, and yeah. so that helped me strengthen my relationship with God because he was the only one I had to lean on for, really? for that That's safety and comfort, yeah. which was weird. I wasn't an active anymore, and yet I was really working on my relationship with the Lord. And when we came back to Idaho, we moved to Boise, and I kind of stopped caring about the LDS religion. Not that I didn't believe it, but I became a little universalist in that, oh, I believe in God, he'll work it out in the end. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of have that attitude, especially like a millennium attitude, you know, it'll all work out in the... Yeah, you know, gotta during, work it During out. the thousand years there, we'll, we'll get it all worked out yes. and stuff, yeah. He knows what I believe, and <laughs> yeah. he knows I'm sincere. He's okay with it. He's okay with it. Yeah. So, and I fell off for a long time, but Nathan was patient, and he still had a relationship with God, and he, he would always... He'd say, oh, good night, you know, sleep, t sleep well, say your prayers, and every single night. He would say that? Yep. And slowly he started being more open and vocal about, hey, let's start establishing and strengthening our relationship with God. Let's start praying together. Let's he, he, he suggested that? Yes. Well, and I thought, oh, okay. And well, I, I didn't in think God, much so, of it. Sure, yeah, why not? And yeah. uh, let's start... Have, let's start making a day of rest where we study scripture together and read the Bible together and I just went right along with it, it didn't mm -hmm. bother me yeah. and slowly, slowly I started discovering some things and the Lord was planting those seeds in me through my husband and I didn't even realize it because it was a couple of years down the road when I was having a conversation with my mother and she asked, well you still believe that Joseph Smith is a prophet, right? And I'd thought these things in my head, but never said them out loud. And when I said, no, I don't, I heard myself say for the first time out loud, and I realized, I don't. Oh I don't goodness. believe that Joseph Smith is a prophet anymore. And that was a part of the crumbling. Well, what kind of things had you considered before that to, to bring you to that point to say that? Well, my husband and I were given a DVD from a coworker. And I kind of just let it sit there and gather dust. And one day he accidentally put it in. And when he looked at it, he thought, oh my goodness, we've got to watch this together. What and is it? It was a DVD of, made by a local church uh -huh. pastor, and it was called Our Mormons Christian. And it was just lovingly comparing the differences between <laughs> Mormonism and Christianity. And he said, I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong, but let's, let's take look a the, look at these look differences. At and so we sat down and watched it together, and it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. I thought, we don't believe those things. The LDS don't believe those, those things about God, Heavenly Father, coming down and consummating uh, his, religion, physical, his relationship. physical relation with Mary. That's absurd. And, and other things. People just don't, or yeah. Mormons don't believe that usually. I mean, the, that that's what they actually do believe. But right, but they, they don't, don't vocalize it to yeah. the general public that that's right. absolutely yeah. what they believe. And other things about, yeah, you're going to become a God someday, just like Jesus is God and Heavenly Father's God and the world's full of gods. And, and these things started clicking for me that that's not what the Bible says. Yeah. And then it was like that snowball. It starts gaining momentum and rolling downhill, and yeah. before I knew it, I was—I uh, would come home, and, and Nathan would be 
<laughs> sitting there with his Bible and his notepad and a tablet with all these websites, and he'd just be researching and doing it. Like, what are you doing? You know, we don't Would take this say, seriously. Look at, look at this. <laughs> he would. Yeah. He would. And um, I was frustrated at first. Like, I don't want to know this stuff. Yeah. I don't care. Right. But then I, I did. know what's true. Or I yeah. thought I knew what was true. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then I did care. And I did want to know. Yeah. Oh, one other thing was. Nathan said, let's pray for God to open our eyes to the truth. Oh, wow. Now that was a big one. You can't fight that one. Nope, no. because he answered that prayer. Uh oh And when I started searching scripture for the first time, it made sense. And I don't know about you, but as a Mormon, the Old Testament was just gobbledygook for me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it do doesn't relate. Nope. And, yeah. it didn't make sense. And the only real New Testament scriptures that I knew and understood were the ones that backed up the Book of Mormon scriptures yeah. that I learned in seminary and in church. Well, well, and we just figure anything that's really Joseph Smith's church or gospel has all been taken out of the Bible, but mm -hmm. it was never there in the first place. Right. And so you, you can ignore it. Yeah, you can ignore it. It wasn't translated correctly or yeah. something. Yeah. But now I open the Bible and it means something, it makes sense. <laughs> but the trick is to actually study it. Yeah. You're not just going to automatically know what the cultures were like back in those days and what the translation from Greek really means. And you really have to want to I, I was know. just thinking that, did you ever have a teacher point out in Mormonism, teach you, teach you about the Greek? Never. Or the Hebrew? Or what this really means or something? No. no. Someone laughed to me about how I always read the King James Version. And he said, oh, so God speaks in, in Old Be English? <laughs> yeah. God speaks in the King's English? And I thought, hmm, hmm. okay. And it didn't really and make interesting it. that the Book of Mormon does the same thing in right. King's English or whatever yeah. they call that. So. so I dug in and that fire started in my heart and now it's insatiable. Yeah. I actually have an insatiable thirst for the word and I also for Mormons. When Do I realized you? that I had been deceived and that I wasn't truly following God's word yeah. and I wasn't following Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was following some man's interpretation of what Jesus was for him in his church and his religion. I took a step back and I started noticing the differences and trying to show my Mormon family, look at these differences. Do you want to talk about them? And they don't, do they? Oh, they get mad at me. Yeah. Yeah. My why, mother and I... Why is it that they don't want to know? I mean, I've had people tell me, I already know what I believe, so I don't even need to look at LDS.org. Mm -hmm. Or at the essays, I already know what I believe. Well, think about what how life-changing it was for you to realize. That's true. And everything came crashing down, and you kind of had to rebuild yeah, a little bit. Not just true. in the world around you, but psychologically. You had to rethink everything, all of your core beliefs. It was kind of like your moment of telling your mom, no, I guess I don't. And mm -hmm. that's big, isn't it? It was big. Yeah. And then I had to say those things out loud to other people. Yeah. And other th things that I discovered about polygamy, which really, wow. <laughs> that one always bothered me, but yeah. the more I dug into that one, it was really difficult. And so many people had these tidbits to, to offer. And you and uh, Sean and Matt and all these different people from different areas came into my life all of a sudden m magically out of thin air and you were just hearing these thought, different perspectives where and, is all this coming from yeah. and i knew it was for a reason so wow. praise god praise god <laughs> praise god well i, I just think that um, it, it's just so different now i mean you mentioned jesus uh, right. where he was just almost a footnote or something yep. it wasn't mm -hmm. in mormonism he was. or again converting to the church type thing, but now he's, what is he now? He's my world. He is the only thing that matters, really. Yeah. And when you put your focus and your effort into doing his will, um, everything it makes sense. Your life makes sense yeah. when you love the Lord first. And the Bible doesn't lie. When God says, you put me first and I will have all these things will come to yeah. you, it's the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All of the promises yeah. are real and they're powerful. If you take them seriously, God's promises are real. And so it's not about the, the works for salvation. It's the works for gratitude yeah. because God saved you. You are so 
thankful for His grace Did and mercy. Did you ever get a concept of grace in Mormonism? Nope. The word was foreign to me. I actually yeah. don't even remember talking about grace. But then again, I was pretty young and yeah. probably immature. Well, the only one I can ever really remember is grace after all we can do. That's about the only one. I never remember reading any grace words out of the Bible. Yeah. I know they're there Second now. Second Nephi 25, 23. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Grace, saved by grace. So that's taken on a whole new perspective, hasn't it? And don't you just wish you could pour that into the Mormon's head or something, I that, do. that subtle beauty of what Christ did for us. It is scary to have to unravel that ball of, of learning and belief. I found myself taking a step back and going, wait a minute, is this a Mormon belief or is this a biblical belief? And for it, probably one, for over of, a of year, craze or I just had a several of them. Everything. Yeah. Uh, well, I spent my whole life earning my salvation, yeah. and I didn't do stuff because I didn't want punished it for God to be mad at me. Yeah. And I had a lot of guilt and in my life. And guilty when you did do something. You wrong. betcha. Yeah. And that's what prompts you to go and confess, and yeah. uh, it keeps you in line. <laughs> So when you have to follow those rules, it really keeps an organization together when, yeah. it, when your salvation depends on it. So I had to spend a lot of time unraveling. When you have all these beliefs, I had to go to the Bible. Yeah. So did you start going to a Christian church at some point? Or? Yes, we, yeah. we thought, well, let's try some out. We've not ever done this. Um, let's pick one and go. And and so. So the first time you went, how was that? It was pretty strange. <laughs> the singing was very boisterous mm -hmm. and loud, and people had their arms raised in utter submission to God and, yeah, and His isn't love. Isn't so different? Than... It was overwhelming. Yeah. And when they taught you right out of the Bible, it wasn't a talk. Do you remember the talks and the speakers? And oh yeah, of course. I'd wake up and I'd plan my talk like on the way to church and this little 10 minute thing and I don't even remember what I said and I know a lot of people, do that, yeah. the obligatory talks right. don't talk about much, uh, especially about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And But you felt like this Christian visit was praise, praising Jesus. Oh, it was more than biblical. praising Jesus. It was, let's go to the Bible and we're gonna study Philippians chapter two today. <laughs> and. But this is the sermon we're talking about Philippians chapter 2 that was yeah. it well let's dig into God's Word what does God tell us and what's funny is Mormons have this thing that Christians are don't have values do you sense that much mm -hmm. that the, the Christian the Mormons don't have, I know I didn't I did myself I didn't have any respect for them really that they were were you raised that way because I was oh yeah that I was well, I following that, the higher path I don't know that anybody told me that but it just was my sense that they didn't have values they didn't care about their kids of course now I, I know that's so silly but but that, but that they were lazy Heathens. that they were yeah yeah. And so they just didn't have the truth, and eventually they'd learn about it. Well, I had more truth, and so <laughs> I was justified in my pride, and it was encouraged. And yeah. I feel very guilty for that because I lived and acted like I was better than others. I look back, and I'm ashamed. Well, we judge. We oh, judge just the terribly. judgment. Yeah. But I will say, speaking of judgment, I look at some Christians, and I think, don't you realize the gift you've been given? Go out and tell people about it. And yeah. um, a lot of Human LDS... Human nature yes, plays into yes. everything, doesn't it? But and I can see why LDS say, oh, the Christians, they just sit on the couch and eat potato chips. I think Michael Wilder said that one. <laughs> They're lazy. They just sit on the couch and eat potato chips, and they don't do anything. Yeah. And, well, the fact is, we don't do anything for our own salvation, but we are called. God still tells us to, to keep His yeah. commandments and do right. His will. But we do it because we've, but not to be saved, right. we've done that. That work has been done mm -hmm. on the cross. Absolutely. Cross means a little bit more to you. I see a beautiful cross on your a neck. A gift and, from yeah. my husband, yes. It was, Isn't that an interesting difference now? Well, the conversation was LDS don't wear crosses because they don't dwell on the death. Mm -hmm. They revel in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is where my sins were paid for. You better believe exactly. I'm never going to forget what was done here for me on my behalf because I don't deserve heaven, that's for sure. And it takes on such an, an amazing meaning for me now. Yeah. Well, I feel the same way. And now that I've learned more about the temple and what 
Gosh, we used to go, and I know you did a lot of baptisms for the dead. Yes, Ugh. I know. <laughs> I look at that now with fresh eyes and think, what? Ow, how could I have done that? Um, but I was sealed well, to were my a, mother. You were a proud savior. You were saving people. Yeah, it was people right. names I couldn't even pronounce. Yeah, so I didn't, usually. It was, wow. But you were getting them started so that they could enter the celestial kingdom to get... Uh, yeah. to get all the blessings of <laughs> the spirit that world. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get sealed to my mother and her husband uh, when she remarried in the temple. Yeah. At about 12 years old, so that's the extent of my temple, temple experience. experience. Besides the baptisms for mm -hmm. the dead. But, Dozens of times yeah. I did that. Yeah. Hundreds of people had their names uh, baptized for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can visit with them later, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I hope they found Christ is all I can say. Well, I hope so too. Yeah, so it's been a good, and you're you're actually here to also to go down to Manti mm -hmm. during the pageant. What do you do there? Are you a? What yeah, do you do? Um, last year was my first year, and I was a little nervous, and yeah. so I, I kind of tiptoed into it. You talk but to people. Uh, and... The experience ended up being so wonderful, yeah. and my goal is to just have conversations and be a witness of of Christ's salvation to the Christians who are trying to earn their way into heaven, and we have. The conversation oh. starters, yeah. and hey, Are you want to come over and talk to, talk to me and, and just chit chat a little bit? A pretty young lady like you, oh, you should be able to get the, people, the, the gentleman to. You catch more flies with honey than vinegar, <laughs> and it, just being friendly and loving and showing Christ's love to them yeah. is is the key. Because, What's a good starter? What's a good thing to? Um, I, a lot of times it helps to ask them about their testimony, and then once they've borne theirs. Say, do you mind if I bear mine? Ooh. And then bear your testimony of Jesus, of Jesus and that salvation that the Bible tells you that you could never earn with your works and that we are, our good works are filthy rags. And How they're, beautiful. yeah. And they got the opportunity, so they kind of feel obligated to listen to mine. Yeah. And all I do is show them love and grace as Jesus showed me and That's maybe sweet. give them an idea that Christians aren't mean. Yeah. and trying to beat them over the head with the Bible, that we're just trying to show them truth. But that you have a testimony of Jesus and His... Mm -hmm. And it his helps that I'm a former people. Mormon, too. Because does it, they ask you that? Or it it does out? sometimes, because I live the culture and I know the lingo. And yeah. you know, it's interesting, that lingo, they all have their own ways of saying yes, things. Yes, we do. <laughs> And so I, I, I haven't forgotten that, right. I don't think. I've caught myself on yeah. those a couple of times. Well, Lindsay, believe it or not, our time's up. I sure appreciate you coming it's down fast. and sharing your story. And, and uh, it's, it's wonderful. And I hope people relate to what you've, you've said. And people that may be struggling, they need to find their way back to Jesus in the Bible. Thanks for having me. I appreciate what you do. Thanks for joining us.